my name is Kayla welcome or welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be doing this look and showing you a little bit of how I do makeup and my techniques and also my first try and first impression of this the palette that I use today which is the Elsa frozen 2 palette from Colourpop if you'd like to see how I made this look just keep watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can be notified when I put out new videos which I'm gonna be trying to put out every Wednesday Thanks so much for clicking on my video. Let's get started. So the way I usually start my makeup is by doing my eyebrows. And today I'm going to be using the ColourPop Brow Boss in the shade Brunette. Now I'm going to go in with concealer and I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to be using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, which is what I usually use, and it's in the shade Warm Light. So I'm just going to take my Morphe 432 brush, and I'm going to take a little bit of that on the brush, like that. Then I'm going to just kind of follow that bottom line that I drew, and like blend it downwards. And then I take a Wet n Wild concealer brush and I just blend it downward and into the bridge of my nose. Just so that there's no harsh lines. And then I'm gonna go ahead and brush my brows. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other one just the same way. So the two palettes I'm going to be using today are the Frozen 2 Elsa palette from Colourpop. I've never used it before, so I'm really excited to try it out. And I'm also going to be using the Strawberry Shake also from Colourpop, which I've used before and I really like. Colourpop's formula for eyeshadows are really nice. So before I go in with my eyeshadow, I'm going to prime my eyes with the MAC Pro Long Wear Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. And... This is actually a game changer when it comes to eyeshadow because I've had eyeshadow crease before and with this primer, rather than using a concealer, it doesn't crease as much on me and it lasts much longer and it doesn't break up as much. So I really recommend this product. It's amazing. So I'm just going to take that on a brush. And just slowly pat it and blend it down on my eyelid. A little goes a long way with this product. When I do eyeshadow looks, I never really plan out what I'm going to do beforehand. I kind of just look at the palette and I see which colors I think would go together in my head or I pick one color and I go from there. So I'm going to do that same thing today. I don't know how this looks going to turn out. I don't know what I'm going to use, but we'll see. I'm going to start by using a Morphe 431 brush and it's actually one of my favorite brushes. I think I'm going to start with going into the shade Winter, which is that blue shade there. And I'm gonna put that on my inner half or inner one third of the crease. Then I'm gonna use a pretty light hand at first just so I can shape out exactly where I want it to go. And then I'll go in with some more to darken it. I always start light so that I can map out where everything needs to go before actually applying a dark color. Now I'm going to take the color I don't know what that says. Fine, biffed. So next I'm gonna take this maroon colored shade in the corner here on that same brush. Just wipe it off on a paper towel. And I'm gonna continue the line lightly down the crease. A little bit above the crease just because I have hooded eyes so sometimes it's not easy to see the color. This color actually looks more purpley in person. 
than I than I thought it would. I'm gonna go back into the winter shade again, just so I can start blending this out in the middle. And darkening up the inner corner shade. I'm gonna take now a fluffier brush, which is gonna be the Morphe 321 brush. And I'm going to take the shade Fire, which is this one here, to try to blend out that more maroon purpley shade so it's not so harsh. So I'm actually gonna take the Morphe X Jeffree Star, the JS9 brush, which is a fluffy kind of blending brush, and I'm gonna stick that into that fire shade. Tap off the excess and then go and blend out this shade. If it's not blending super well, what I like to do is I like to go back into that original darker shade and apply more so that I can blend it up. And then just place it there a little bit and then go back with that other shade. And blend it out. And I'm just gonna continue doing those two steps until it's blended the way I like it. I'm gonna do little circular motions and uh, windshield wiper motions to get the blend. I actually really like the way this is turning out. I'm now actually gonna go into my Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blue Bud Palette so that I can find a nice blue to blend out that inner corner shade. I'm going to take my Morphe X Jeffree Star JS6 brush into the shade I'm Cold, which is this shade right here, and just lightly uh, windshield wiper motions to try to get that blended just like the other one. Taking more of I'm cold and just blending, blending, blending. Like I said, with the darker shade, I'm going to go into that original corner shade and try to blend it up. It's looking super pretty so far. Blending eyeshadow is one of my favorite activities. Just, I have so much control over the color. And it really brings out my creativity because in any other aspect of my life, I'm really not creative. This is the only way I can show my creative side. I hope it looks as good on camera as it does right here in my mirror because I'm really loving this. Make sure I'm blending those middle shades lightly so everything is seamless. These colors are gorgeous. Having a big fluffy brush really helps when blending out these shades. What I like to do once my crease colors are all fully blended, I like to go in with my highlight shade now, just because I feel like it completes the upper half of my eye. So I think I'm gonna go in with my Wet n Wild Loose Pigment in the shade You're My Boo instead of using one of these palettes because I think it'd be more shimmery and I think it would look better than what I have in these palettes. Just gonna dump the tiniest amount on the back of my hand and I'm gonna take it with that M507 brush, tap off the excess. And just run it on the top of my my brow bone. I feel like this also helps blend out that edge of the eyeshadow and it, it really comes together and makes the look. I just like to take this brush and run over here because it helps blend a little bit more too. This is a very good blending brush. I just tend not to use it for that because it, it's better for the highlight. So I think now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the color onto my lid so I can start blending into the lid. 
I'm gonna take that shade Spin Drift again in the corner and just lightly bring that down, just like that. Very lightly so that I can take other shades around it. I think I'm gonna blend out this bottom part with a little pink instead of the mm, purplish shade on the top. So on an e.l.f. crease brush, looks like that, I'm gonna take the shade Woke from the Strawberry Shake palette and try to blend the outside of that outer corner lightly. I like most of my darker colors to have a light, almost glowy, a glowy look to them. Again, taking small little circles and a very light amount of color to try to blend that out. We don't want the outer corner to get too big. Blending up a little bit into that shade up there. Trying to keep it as small as possible because I have a really small eye and I'm working on a very small space. So trying to keep it as compact as possible, but still trying to show all the color. So in my last video, I showed that I got the MAC 224 brush. And now what I like to do with this is I like to take it dry with no color on it and blend the outsides just so there's no harshness. Take it and rub it on the outside. It doesn't do much, but when you're looking at things up close, it does a lot. Now I'm gonna start blending towards the inner lid part of my eye because that's blended to the degree that I like it. I think I'm gonna take the shade Awakened. Why every time I look at all of my brushes, I can't ever find the exact one that I'm looking for when I know it's right in front of me. I'm gonna take that on my Morphe X Jeffree Star JS13 brush, and I'm gonna start in this little corner and just blend it down. Still using a very small amount of color. To really get a good blend, you're gonna to wanna to use so many different shades. That's what I found works best for me when blending. So the shade is a little bit lighter than I expected it to be. So I'm gonna go back into that spin drift color. Blend that into there so I can make it a little bit darker. You always want your outer corner to be darker than your inner corner because it has an effect. Gives contour to your eye. I'm gonna go back and in with the shade Awakened. I don't usually do darker eye looks, so I feel like this is gonna flop, but I really liked it to begin with. I don't know if I should do a cut crease or just do like a cut crease with a shimmer shade. I think I'll probably do a cut crease with a shimmer shade and maybe put some glitter on top of it. So I'm gonna take actually my Urban Decay Naked 2 brush that came in that palette forever ago when I got it because this flat end is perfect for getting super precise lines when doing a, a shimmer or a glitter cut crease. So I'm gonna take the shade Ice Crystals on my brush and just wipe my brush on there because that's the easiest way I've um, found to get the product on my brush. And I'm just gonna start not exactly in the corner, but just on the lid so I can get the color on there before actually mapping out. Wow, that is a glittery, sparkly shade. Now I'm gonna go up and start mapping out that cut look. And 
and hopefully I can get it cut and even the way I'd like it to be. Sometimes with the ColourPop shimmer shades, they don't up they apply very evenly and very nice, but at the same time, it looks like they're patchy. That's my one complaint about those shades. Also, if I had just cut it with concealer first, it would probably be better, but I took the easy way out just so this video wouldn't be an hour long. All right, now I usually like to take another shimmer shade to try to blend between this darker shade and the actual shimmer shade, and it looks like I'm gonna use Gale, I think is the color, right between those two shades. And use the same wiping motion that I used to do the silver. I'm really liking the way this is turning out. I'm really glad I decided to do this look today. Following that line on top that I used to faux cut. And then the other nice thing about this brush is the other side is fluffy. And I can use that to try to blend these shades a little bit more. And then take Awakened again putting some of this color over the glitter and kind of layering that shimmer glitter color shimmer glitter color really helps a seamless blend form seems that this shade isn't the easiest to use but it's really pretty I'm going to go back in with Gale, just a little bit. Love the way this is turning out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye off camera just because it took me so long to do this, and I'll be right back. Also, I'm finding with these shimmer shades is there's a lot of fallout, and when you try to wipe it off, it makes your face all shiny. And even when I take like a big fluffy brush, it kind of just makes your face even more shiny, which is another reason why doing your eyes first is good because you can always just cover that with your foundation later. Now that I'm done with the eyes, at least the top part, we're gonna move on to the face. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of face makeup. I don't usually wear it. Like when I'm doing eye makeups for Instagram, I just do my eyeshadow and I ignore, completely ignore the rest of my face. However, for this video, I will be doing a little bit of face makeup. Nothing special, just an everyday kind of thing. Starting with the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer, which is really good. I like it a lot. I actually started using it because I got a mini from Sephora and fell in love with it. So I had to get a big one. It smells super good. So this is one of my favorite primers to use. I'm going to start by taking that on the back of my nail and just kind of putting that on my face. I know a lot of people just use it for their um, oily or porous zones. I like to use it for my whole face. Um, that's just me personally. I don't usually use multiple primers, so I try not to get super close to my eyes because Either my eyebrows, like, they'll start to get oily and not run, but, like, you'll be able to see the color kind of expand or bleed almost. Especially with something like this. It's going to be lip balm in the shade Diet Shane. Just to keep my lips hydrated. So for applying my foundation, I've been really liking the Real Techniques Miracle Sponge. I'm going to be using the Huda Foundation in the shade Latte. And this is actually my favorite foundation for the way it makes my skin look almost flawless. Trying not to get too close to the eye makeup so I don't ruin it, but still wanting to get my whole face the struggles but look at how beautiful this makes my skin look so worth it it is super fragrant too 
Like, it smells good. I'm not sure that it's super great for my skin, though. And that's just one pump on my face. Make sure blending down the neck. For my concealer, I'm going to continue using the Maybelline Age Rewind, the same one I used for concealing the bottom part of my eyebrows. Just it. I like to do these parts first because my under eye is a very creasy area and for the life of me, I can't find something that works for it to not crease. I've tried the Tarte Shape Tape, but right now that shade, the shade that I have, is my summer shade. Blending this out with the same sponge that I used for my foundation. I feel like this does help brighten up quite a bit, especially because it's such a light shade. And for setting powder, I'm going to use the Laura Mercier translucent um, loose setting powder. I'm just going to keep that open because I like to open it before I actually start my under eye because like I said, it gets so creasy that I like to just dip in right away so that I can avoid those creases. I don't like to apply a super whole lot because then it can start to cake and look unnatural and mess up my eye makeup. And I'm gonna go in afterwards and re-blend out this corner so it doesn't look messed up. Well, both corners, not just that one. As you can see, it really brightens up that area for me. Right after blending, I'm going to go ahead and dip my sponge and immediately tap on this powder. And hope that I don't crease because I always crease and sure enough, there's a crease. As hard as I try for it not to crease, it just does. And I'm gonna take the other side so that I don't get any powder in this one before having it fully blend out. Again, avoiding having it crease, but as you just saw, there's like no way to avoid it. I think it's just how the skin underneath my eye just kind of, it just kind of lives that way. And now that I've blended all that, all that shininess, all the fallout from that silver has gone away. Again, setting the under eye, I tried to avoid, to try to avoid creasing right off the bat, but it's not really going to work. So now that that's all set, I'm going to go ahead and grab it on the rest of here so I can set the rest of my face. Set, 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 set my face. <laughs> I love the way all these products make my skin look. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and re-blend out here with that same MAC brush that I, was, that I got in the last video. Just because I feel like it really helps the eye makeup look better. Alright, so I've been using the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contour Palette in the shade Caramel Toffee. And I've been really liking how, um, how this looks. And I also have the Limited Edition Wet n Wild Pac-Man brush. I actually have the whole collection. And I'm going to take that darker contour shade and just coat my brush, tap it off, and start out here. You can already see how it's working. I actually really like this, even though it's just a, a drugstore product. A lot of my products lately have been drugstore because it gets expensive. Let's dip back in, do the jaw. forehead it's not gonna be even on both sides like the rest of my makeup because it's hard
And then there's also a lighter shade in here that I like to go into a little bit. Helps brighten up the under eye just a little bit more. Now I'm going to go in with some blush. And for that, I'm going to be using my Sephora Pro Angled Blush Brush. It's the 49 brush. It's my absolute favorite and go-to for blush because I really like the way it angles up. I'm going to be using my NARS Gulu. However you pronounce that, I'm not 100% sure. But it looks like this. And start applying like this with the angled part of it, this part, out. And I really like how this blush is a pretty natural brush and I always bring up, I started about like where my bronzer finishes and I bring it up a little bit. I really like that rosiness it gives me. I really like that trend of having like the blush nose. I don't do it like super, super dark, but just a little bit of light. I think it looks cute. It's a super light blush. I've actually had it for a really long time and I didn't appreciate it until recently. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and set my face real quick with the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Setting Spray, Fix Plus. It's the watermelon scent, which I'm super happy about because it smells really good. So I'm just gonna... It smells super hydrating. Tap it in to make sure everything's... I'm now going to go in with some clear brow gel now that we're done with all that top part of my face. And I'm going in with the Essence Lash and Brow Gel. It is clear. I've used it a lot, so it's kind of uh, murky. But I'm just going to use this and I'm going to run it through my brows just to keep a little bit of structure in here. After I've put the product in, I like to take my... JS7 again and really shape it to make sure all the hairs are going the way that I like them to. Do the same on the other side. All right, now I'm gonna go in with some highlight. And I actually got this in the last video too, the Peppermint Frost Palette. Gorgeous. I think I'm gonna take some of Ugly Sweater and just fan that. I like to bring my highlight all the way up here so that when I turn my face, it goes like the highlight goes around. So this is super pretty. Nice little glow. Go on the other side. Just going for a more natural highlight today. I'm going to go ahead and do my underneath the eye colors which I like to accent the look. So sometimes I don't do exactly what the average person would do, which was which would be match it or anything like that. I'm gonna take another one of my Wet n Wild Dense Short Brushes. I can't really remember what it's called, but um, it's really good for underneath the lash line. I'm gonna take the color Ocean Ice, that's this one here which is the most glittery shade in the Blue Book palette. And I'm just gonna take that underneath here very subtly. I think using a completely different color than the rest of the look really kinda pulls it together and makes it pretty. It also like smokes out the bottom, really finishes out the look. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now, my next favorite part about my eyes and next favorite product to use is the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner. It is great, and I use it in the shade Exit. Mine's actually broken just because it's like in the middle, it like snapped off. So it's kind of really hard to use. I only have to put it out a teeny tiny little bit. And I just line my waterline. And let me tell you how big of a difference that makes. Like, especially in pictures, really makes the look 
so put together. This is one of my favorite products that ColourPop has. I really want to get more colors just because different colors could make my looks super different. To set my face, I'm going to be using the Cover FX Mattifying Setting Spray, which was actually recommended to me by one of my good friends. Pat in the spray. There's no dots or anything. I'm going to go ahead and re-highlight my face with the same ugly sweater color. Ooh, okay. So this setting powder left dots all over my face. Little white dots, do you see them? This is the second time it's done that. Maybe it's because I didn't shake it. Shake very well before use. Go me. Well, Pretty much just ruined my entire makeup, but we'll continue. More highlight. Maybe it'll distract from those little white dots covering my entire face. I can't believe, I can't believe it. So the shade is a little snow and it looks like this. Really pretty packaging. Anyway, so that's the lipstick horribly applied. And then there's the lip gloss, the I think it's like a super gloss super shine, high shine, something like that glass, and it's in the shade Mythic Journey. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that on top of this, like a lip topper, it's super shiny. I love how sparkly it is. Ooh. I don't like putting glasses over lipstick much because of this. leaves residue obviously on the brush or applicator. I can't get over the fact that the setting spray left these white dots all over my face. I'm gonna shake this up and try again. I'm hoping it doesn't leave more dots. I think it didn't leave any more little white dots, so user error. A plus for me today. So I usually start with the bottom lashes and I'm gonna be using the MAC False Lashes Extreme Black Mascara, one of my favorites. I'm featured on the MAC website underneath this product so you can go and scroll down and you'll see my picture, which is my Anna interpretation. So this is my Elsa interpretation and then I have my Anna one. I didn't use the palette from that because it was a while ago but it was still my Anna interpretation so if you could go check that out. The biggest thing I have a problem with with these lip products is every time I've worn them so far it gets lipstick on my teeth which never happens to me. Big downfall. So I'm gonna be using this MAC mascara for my bottom lashes. And I just lightly apply to avoid clumps or excess application in one spot. If it gets a little clumpy, I like to use a cleaned off mascara wand. I like this one. I think it's the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara Wand that I just cleaned off and I use it to take out or brush out the clumps so that there's no more mascara being applied but I can brush it out so it looks good. I just got mascara on my contacts, so now I can't see. <gasps> Are you serious?
That's the first time I've ever done that. Get mascara in my hair. What the heck? Nothing wants to go right, right now. Seriously! Seriously. Anyways, just trying to do my eyelashes here, running into every issue that I possibly could run into. I'm gonna take my eyelash curler and lightly curl my lashes. And I'm going to apply the mascara gently and lightly again, like on the bottom to avoid any mess ups. This is really my favorite mascara because it just coats my lashes perfectly. I have really long lashes to begin with, so I don't need super lengthening mascara, but this does help with that as well. Look at the difference. I don't usually apply fake eyelashes. Sometimes I do, but I'm not really great at applying them. And also I don't think that they're always necessary, especially when you've taken so much time to actually do your eye look and blend it out. And I want to be able to show off the makeup that I've already done rather than block it. And my lashes are long enough to where they're the length I like. I'm super happy how this look came out today. I really like the technique of kind of winging it when it comes to the eyeshadow colors because you never know what you're going to get by the end of it. It's better than planning it out because when you plan out things, they can get messed up and then you'll get disappointed and frustrated and I'd rather avoid that whole mess. So I like to randomize it or pick one color and then branch off from there or one palette and branch off from there. It's one of my favorite techniques. Thanks so much for watching my video. The support means the most. Bye.